Okay, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me and see the screen? I believe so. And if so, we can get started. Yes. Okay. So uh, let's get going. Uh, my name is Bruce, and I'm the COO and senior trader at Traders for Traders. And this is the webinar on trading geopolitical events, interpreting current news events, and finding trading opportunities. Okay. So uh, let me move forward here. Oops. Okay, at Traders for Traders, we look at a lot of the fundamental analysis to guide our trading activity. And in previous webinars, I had gone through the central bank sentiment and uh, the economic data and how to prepare for each of these events and what to look for. And this time, I'm going to go over the geopolitical events. And this is the most tricky uh, or the trickiest of all. Uh, of the other ones, the other um, to give a, a much purer direction, you know, the economic data for the most part is one number and it gives you immediately uh, direction to the currency. And uh, uh, the central bank sentiment uh, is also it's a little more complex because there's statements to read. And that's very topical because today we have the FOMC minutes and that's exactly what the market is going to be waiting for until 2 p.m. Uh, New York time. Okay, so uh, you have to, you know, read through those statements and uh, ascertain the direction and the kind of bias uh, from the central bank. Uh, it can be a little more difficult, but the geopolitical events. Uh, this is all across the board. Okay, this is um, a lot trickier because uh, it involves uh, trading partners, it involves uh, you know economies, it involves uh, weather, it involves war and terrorism. And all sorts of things. Usually, uh, what happens is, for us as traders is the economic data and the central bank sentiment can give us very pure direction. Uh, and uh, uh, we, that's actually happening right now uh, with the central banks are actually looking very closely at the economic data to guide their policies. However, this guy here, the geopolitical political events can really throw a wrench into everything, okay? And that uh, happens frequently. Uh, it is rare to have all, all three uh, coinciding together. And when you do, though, uh, you get really, really good movement in the currencies, all right? So anyway, anyway let's go over a definition of what geopolitical uh, events are. And, and geopolitics is defined as uh, the study of the influence of such factors as geography, economics, and demography on the politics and especially foreign policy of a state. Okay, that really opens up things into much broader categories, uh, talking about the weather, talking about political structures of various um, governments and how they relate to other countries, uh, the trading partners, the imports and the exports, um, all, all sorts of things. I mean, there can be, um, uh, weather. Uh, let's let's go on to the next slide here. Um, it, yeah, politics, elections, sanctions, war, terrorism, keynote speeches. Um, you know, we have earnings uh, from stock markets. We have M and A activity. Uh, there's weather, natural disasters would affect the commodities and imports and exports. Uh, there's can be drought. There can be drought, fires, hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, anything basically. There can be outbreaks and disease like with Ebola, which hasn't really affected the markets uh, yet, but it, it has the potential. Uh, and that's uh, to be noted. Uh, you know, getting back into the weather, I mean, a uh, very, very simple one is just even cold weather. Uh, has had an effect on the U.S. economy, and uh, uh, that's uh, pretty major uh, because the, the world right now is looking toward the U.S. to help us out uh, of this uh, kind of global recessionary uh, environment, all right? And the cold weather last winter had an effect on the economic data, and uh, it was written up several times in, in the FOMC uh, uh, statements and uh, Yellen had remarked about it several times also in the press conferences. Okay, so uh, that's the kind of uh, things that we're dealing with here. And why is this the most tricky? Uh, is because we don't know what they're going to be. Uh, they, they kind of come out of the blue. 
uh, the timing is is way off. Um, you know, this can happen in the middle of the night. We can be away from the screens. They can be hard to prepare for. Uh, there can be several different players in several different scenarios that start to open up. Uh, you know, with uh, political um, entanglements uh, between different countries, uh, different speakers may come out that are uh, lesser important, trying to make a name for themselves, uh, and they can uh, uh, start to uh, uh, affect uh, uh, the news and start to affect then uh, uh, policy. Okay, so uh, all sorts of things going on, all sorts of players, and uh, it's uh, the hardest to get a, a grasp. Above. Um, now that said, um, the uh, uh, best way to get involved uh, in into this is to uh, just start reading and uh, uh, you know uh, start looking at the the headlines, uh, start to get a feel for what's going on out there. Uh, then uh, you know start to drill down into uh, uh, articles and start to read through them, and some of those articles will lead to other articles. And uh, from there, uh, you start to get a, a much bigger picture of what's going on, uh, and then uh, you know, ask ask questions about like w what are the the possibilities and potential uh, for, for this affecting the markets. Okay, and that that's the key here. Is in the end, I mean, this can be fun, you know, can but it can be very distracting, and it can lead off paths uh, from trading, and that's exactly what we don't want to do. Uh, so the key here is to always ask how this is going to affect the markets and, and what markets. Okay. So anyway, uh, for example, let's just jump right in and, uh, you know, uh, we can start here with headlines on uh, FX street. Okay. Now I, I just found this one this morning here, uh, down here with the persistent weakness in, uh, New Zealand milk powder prices. Okay. So if we click on that, uh, that leads to this article here and starts to talk about uh, Christmas, uh, unwanted, unwanted Christmas presents uh, just because of the fall in price of milk. Now, this gets to the point of trying – first, you know, it's good to read the articles, but it starts – you start to um, unwind what's actually going on because New Zealand, uh, their main export is milk. And in fact, uh, it drives a lot of the economy, and they're very reliant on it. Okay, so that's a, that's a big issue. So uh, if if there's some sort of mad cow disease, or if there's some sort of problem over there, uh, that's going to affect uh, the uh, New Zealand economy. And uh, uh, this is uh, these are the things to to look for and to to understand and uh, start to weave into your trading plan. Okay, so uh, from from this article here. Uh, you know, there's some related content links over here. I clicked on that, and that brought up uh, another article here uh, from forex.com. And uh, you can start to see and, you know, start to unravel some of these things. Like, well, okay, uh, let's see here. What was it? Uh, uh, the one company here, uh, Fonterra, is um, responsible for about 30% of the world's dairy exports, and New Zealand's largest company is cutting its dairy payout. Okay, so that's pretty important. Uh, that's pretty important to know, uh, and we can just jump right over uh, into the Kiwi, all right, in the charts, uh, and you can see the sell-off here. Okay, now uh, this, you know, there's lots of things involved here. Uh, there's a sell-off in uh, commodities in general. But, you know, this is a news event here that we're looking directly at, uh, and we, we know that this affects the economy. And, and uh, therefore, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a seller of Kiwi right now, okay? So that's, uh, that's the way to uh, uh, start to weave this into a uh, trading plan. And, you know, uh, mix that with some of the other issues out there as just a broad sell-off in uh, the uh, – uh, I got a crash here. Okay, um, it start to weave that into the um, other commodity sell-offs, and then uh, you you have a a pretty good picture that uh, yeah okay well I'm I'm going to be a seller of Kiwi. Uh, I'm looking for technical levels or whatever it is uh, that you use to get involved into the trade. Okay, there's uh, another issue here about uh, uh, you know who their trading partner is, um, and uh, that uh, is China. Now, th this has been uh, so important for New Zealand 
that has been called white gold. Uh, milk has been called white gold because it's done so well for the economy. And a lot of that milk has, has gone over to China. Right? So if China starts to have a slowdown, well, that too is going to affect uh, New Zealand milk exports and start to affect the New Zealand economy. Okay, So uh, that's just um, uh, one uh, article that's very topical today uh, that we can see directly in the charts and we can start to put that into our trading plan. Okay. All right. So uh, the, the key here uh, is to start to um, create a bias, okay, from reading the uh, articles out there. If you, you know, start, start with um, uh, the simple um, headlines like I had just gone over. Uh, you know, you can start here at FX Street. You can then go to uh, some of the uh, other economic uh, news from Bloomberg, for example. Uh, you can go into Reuters. Uh, and then I think it's important here to to get a global slant. Okay, so uh, look at the New York Times, look at the World section, go over to the BBC, uh, look at the various countries, uh, and um, you know start to get a feel for what's going on uh, and how it affects uh, the markets. Okay, that's uh, the step one to to do, and then uh, uh, start to ask questions, drill down, uh, create a bias. Uh, an outlook for this, and then start to run it through different scenarios of like, okay, well, if if they do this, then what's going to happen? Okay, so this is uh, uh, quite quite important, uh, and uh, uh, it can add a ton to your uh, bottom line in trading. Okay, all right. So um, let's uh, take a look here at um, some of the other uh, current issues right now that are affecting the market. And uh, a few different things that are going on. Okay, well, th this here is an issue. Okay, uh, uh, Putin in general. Okay, this is about um, uh, the article is about uh, uh, kind of a crackdown on, on corruption, uh, and, and th that has really nothing to do with uh, uh, the markets at the moment. However, uh, what's going on uh, with Russia is uh, very prevalent in the markets right now, and it's affecting uh, Europe. And uh, it's, uh, you know, affecting uh, Eastern Bloc countries uh, that uh, uh, are very, uh, uh, you know, he's starting to rattle the sword there and he's starting to bully them. OK, and it looks like Ukraine to me, you know, in, in my mind, it looks like an invasion is imminent. Uh, I, I don't think that uh, uh, I mean, Russia will invade is what I'm what I'm that, that's the scenario I'm coming up with. OK, and uh, the way that. Uh, uh, he, he, his all of his uh, actions have been geared uh, toward that, and uh, he's been flying bombers um, and uh, you know uh, started to bully some of the other smaller nations, uh, and uh, and he's ramped up uh, supplies and troops on the border of the Ukraine. Okay, so why why what's going on here, and and what what um, this has been going on for quite a while now. Now, you know, the picture here starts to unravel uh, and start to build the scenarios of uh, Russia's in trouble. I mean, uh, uh, there's economic sanctions that are hurting them uh, severely right now, okay? And uh, also, the uh, uh, price of oil has dropped significantly recently, and they rely heavily on exportation of oil uh, to uh, boost uh, their... their um, uh, their exports. Okay, so uh, they're getting hit hard here, and they're getting desperate. Okay, so it's not a good thing. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, war is uh, uh, you know very, very uh, uh, eminent, or uh, something that happens uh, when people do get uh, kind of uh, painted into a corner, and uh, and desperation starts to eke out. All right, so. Um, Let's see here. I mean, these are really simple plays. Okay, for example, I know that we can't really trade the ruble, but when these sanctions started to come out um, on uh, on Russia, uh, dollar ruble would, would be the easiest choice in the world. Okay, and we can uh, take a quick look at that. Uh, let's see, I got it here, and uh, you know, this is in uh, in Bloomberg, and uh, you know, here here's the price of the uh, dollar ruble. Uh, this has started to uh, really uh, uh, have its weakness back here, um, you know, August, September. 
and you can just see it ramp up, okay? This has been a move from what? Let's just say about 36 on up to 46, 47. Uh, you know, that, that's 10,000 pips. Is that right? So that's a, a very, very uh, simplistic, uh, easy play to understand that, um, you know, with the sanctions as well as the price of oil, this is going to hurt the Russian economy, and there's a direct trade that you you can uh, you you can trade. You know, if you have access to dollar ruble, that is, okay. But you know, there's other possibilities and uh, other ways of of trading this as well, okay. So, uh, for example, uh, when the Ukraine uh, issue started to flare up, uh, a lot of us at, at, at Traders for Traders were looking at not. Uh, trading the euro because it was affecting the price there, and we wanted to stay away from uh, any of the uh, volatility with the euro because we just didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, so therefore, we started looking at other crosses and other currencies like uh, the Aussie dollar or the Canadian dollar or the Kiwi uh, and uh, just start to veer away from the eurozone in general. Okay, that's another way to to play this. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, that's uh, the Ukraine, and uh, uh, that is uh, very much in the headlines now uh, as well. Uh, uh, and then uh, another issue that uh, came across here uh, was the um, – uh, just a minute here. What was it? Okay, uh, Abe here from uh, Japan, uh, the prime minister. Uh, you know, there was a, a news here about uh, – they, they were really looking forward to uh, raising a sales tax to help pay for some of the uh, uh, QQE uh, Part 2 that they released uh, uh, last uh, uh, few weeks. And we've seen the play out, right, um, in, the, in the dollar-yen based on that quantitative easing. Okay, So if we look over at dollar-yen, uh, let's just go to a daily. And we can see that here uh, on the 31st of November, um, October, and just massive spike higher, okay? And uh, and it just continues to go, and it, it it's uh, looking really poised here to take out the 118 level, all right? Now, uh, to look at this um, today uh, and for trading opportunities, well, that that sales tax was um, was was coming into play here, and uh, uh, but. You know, the bias was that, you know, coming from my side, at least looking at this, it was like, well, that would be crazy to raise sales tax when the economy is struggling, especially after we had those bad numbers uh, for uh, the GDP. Uh, you know, technically, they are in a recession now and raising taxes in a recession doesn't make very good sense or, or uh, a public policy. OK, so uh, based on that, uh, you know, you can speculate. Uh, and start to look for some entry levels for going long dollar yen. Okay, and now this also coincides again, like you know, putting kind of bigger picture together of uh, that news event, along with, of course, dollar strength uh, and also the the QQE2, uh, but also this following the the U.S. stock market. Okay, and if we look over at the S and P, uh, well, the the S and P um, uh, just today uh, we're seeing a, a sell off. Uh, and it's back down into this range here that it was before. But this is where it spiked uh, higher yesterday, okay? And this was based on some healthcare um, uh, earnings, and uh, you can see that uh, uh, we went above the uh, 2050 uh, level. Now, you know, just start to put that together uh, and uh, take a slant and a bias and weave it into your trading plan that dollar yen is going to go long, all right? And, uh, and that's uh, also with the help of uh, some of the uh, current events that are happening in the market today. All right, so uh, that's the yen. And uh, what uh, what else can we look at here? Uh, you know, there's it's kind of kind of a funny environment at the moment, uh, just because um, uh, the uh, it, it's basically just been dollar strength across the board. All right, so it's um, it, you know it's kind of hard to uh, at the moment uh, uh, find anything that's going to uh, you know be kind of interesting to unravel. I mean, they, the kiwi one there with the the milk was pretty good, uh, you know. But um, uh, some of the things to start to consider though, uh, and start to um, put into your trading plan and start to look for 
are um, the, the strengths and weaknesses of the various economies. Okay, so you know if you look at uh, the pound, for example, uh, the the UK uh, is a service based economy, right, for the most part, and uh, uh, you know you can you can see that in uh, uh, the different uh, uh, releases with the, the the services PMIs. Uh, now, if you start to see some M and A activity, uh, as we saw with uh, Pfizer and AstraZeneca some months ago, well, that that affected the uh, uh, the pound, right? And uh, the pound went uh, uh, shooting upwards, right? Now that 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 deal fell through, and the merger didn't happen. However, the speculation on it it certainly affected the uh, price of the uh, of the pound. Uh, another one too was the Scottish vote. Okay, now this was this was really kind of interesting one because the Scottish vote uh, for independence uh, brought a lot of volume into the FX markets. So the FX markets have uh, you know they're starting to pick up again, but uh, uh, until then it was it was it was noted uh, in the news that. Uh, uh, this Scottish vote had uh, increased the volatility in the FX markets uh, due to uh, their, the, yeah, the independence that they were seeking. And um, let's uh, take a look at that on the daily chart. All right, so uh, this is where that happened, uh, and this is where it was announced. And we saw the the massive drop here uh, in uh, in pound on the daily. Now, if you wanted to play that, um, you know, and you started to take a a speculative outlook on that started to understand um, if if this is serious, uh, if it's possible, uh, you know, by reading some of the articles out there and then start to look into it a little bit deeper. Well, here's plenty of opportunities. You know, th this was a like a 400, 500 pip sell off, right? Now, as soon as that news started to come out that this was not going to happen and the vote. Uh, you can see that uh, it was a rebound exactly just about the same, uh, back up about 400, 500 pips. Okay, but now this is where it gets kind of interesting because it's not, not just you know the majors here that you can play. All right, you can play lots of different ways here, and you can start to look at. I mean, dollar is strong. Okay, so and dollar has been strong for for a while now. Uh, so yen has been weak. All right, well. Let's let's uh, play a strong currency against a weak currency, and we'll look over at the pound yen. Okay, and uh, here's pound yen, and we can see here that Scottish vote here on what happened, uh, and this move here uh, originally sell off about 400 pips, but uh, and then we saw the pound strength here uh, about 1,100 pips. All right, now if you had it, if you had an uh, outlook. Uh, and uh, technical levels for for going long on this pair, uh, you would have been paid really really nicely. All right, so uh, that's where, where um, the kind of um, international um, uh, you know flow and understanding of what's going on out there uh, can really really help uh, you know mix uh, and match some of the uh, stronger and weaker currencies. Okay, and and start to uh, look at this uh, that way. I mean, you know, a, a very obvious play is um, uh, CAD yen uh, on oil, right? And the reason being is, uh, you know, I'm sure most of you guys know uh, that um, the CAD uh, is can, uh, Canada exports a lot of oil. Okay, so higher price in oil uh, is usually going to mean pretty pretty good uh, news for the Canadian economy. Uh, however, high price for oil in Japan is not good because they import almost all of their oil, right? And if uh, if they need to pay a higher price for oil, well, that's going to make uh, things a lot more difficult for their economy, right? So uh, playing the CAD yen uh, would be a very, very simple, uh, easy example of uh, how to play the crosses on this. Uh, another one, too, that uh, – and these should be kind of um, understood and uh, kind of go-to um, – uh, uh, currencies, uh, uh, understanding these markets, because like, for example, the flight of safety, um, you know, we all know that uh, flight to safety is gold, uh, also U.S. dollar, bonds, um, and 
this should be rather automatic. You know, when we start to see bad news, when we start to see terrorism, when we start to see wars, uh, you know, or, you know, really bad outcomes in the economies. Well, money is going to flow out of the more speculative uh, areas and into the safer uh, havens. Okay. And that's, uh, we see that happen all the time. Right. And uh, these are, these are easy plays. Um, but uh, anyway, that's, um, uh, just something to to uh, understand and be uh, prepared for ahead of time, understanding the economies uh, and what will affect them uh, ahead of time uh, will make a major difference. If we look over at the Aussie dollar, for example, I mean, the, the uh, commodity prices are just killing uh, the, the Aussie dollar right now. OK, you, you can see the, the sell off here uh, right through this technical level uh, with the trend line and uh, just continued on down to the downside. Now, uh, the Australian economy is very reliant on mining. They basically like two economies. You have the retail economy and you have this uh, mining uh, industry that uh, uh, exports uh, a lot of iron ore uh, for the development in China. Okay, And uh, any sorts of slowdown in China and uh, uh, any sorts of slowdown in development or uh, commodity prices and you start to see how it affects the currencies. All right. And uh, uh, so anyway, that's uh, uh, one example of getting to know what the country is, uh, what their major economies are and um, uh, how how that affects uh, price. Uh, you know, another topical issue that's happening right now uh, is the uh, is Hong Kong. OK. And the demonstrations going on there. Uh, see, I think I had it here. Uh uh, maybe I didn't, but it, it, yeah, it, there was, there was an article today about it. Um, let's see. Uh, no, I don't see it. Um, uh, anyway, uh, uh, that, uh, also too, uh, has been, uh, uh, something that this is, this could be a real problem. I mean, it, it you know, um, how is this, how does this affect the markets? How, how do a bunch of students, uh, demonstrating in Hong Kong uh, affect the Chinese uh, economy, uh, and uh, well, there's potential there, right? It could be uh, a real issue because uh, if there, you know, I mean, human rights uh, has been uh, a, a very big issue in China, and you know, uh, West the West doesn't really uh, uh, look highly upon that whatsoever, uh, and uh, if there are um, uh, human rights issues, um, and uh, they crack down on these demonstrators really hard. Well, there there could there's possible sh sanctions that could happen against China. Okay, that's a possibility. It's a possible scenario. Uh, if that does happen, well, that's going to hurt China. All right, and if that hurts China, uh, that's going to hurt. Um, and, and and you know they're they're basically uh, uh, leading economy for the um, uh, these. Um, uh, you know, peripheral economies like, uh, you know, looking at Brazil or, um, you know, Russia or uh, all, all the BRIC, uh, you know, countries, right? And um, uh, these um, uh, these economies, they, they, they um, if it's going to hurt China, well, it's definitely going to hurt them, okay? And um, uh, you can start to, uh, uh, you know, piece together, uh, start to look for these things in the news and start to see if that's a possible scenario. Well, then who's who's going to get hurt and or who's going to win, right? And uh, start to, um, you know, uh, look for these uh, and uh, mix them in uh, with your central bank sentiment and also your um, uh, your economic data, all right? Okay, uh, let's see. Um, uh, another issue that's happening right now. Now, this is um, uh, something that uh, you know I find rather funny. Um, it's not really it's it's not really uh, uh, an event that's affecting the market, but this and this is on the BBC and uh, they're, they're talking about the Keystone uh, bill fails to pass the Senate. Okay, uh, well, why is this important? You know, I mean, they're actually you know this is there's an article here of why it's so disputed. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, encourage you to go go take a look at that. Uh, however, um, you know, this is more about what's happening in the U.S. Uh, with the elections that just uh, uh, just occurred. And now the uh, Senate majority uh, is going to be Republican, and that means that the Republicans now have control of both houses of uh, House Representatives and the Senate. Okay, 
this they're testing them themselves here uh, with this Keystone bill, and it failed. Right. Well, it's going to pass in the future. They're and they're going to they're going to uh, uh, have this bill. Um, uh, you know, they're going to give it another shot for sure, especially after uh, the beginning of the new year. Uh, and uh, it's going to it's going to pass. Right. So, uh, you know, a pipeline between Alberta, Canada and uh, um, down into the U.S. and into Nebraska is is most likely going to ha happen. Right. So. Uh, uh, that's going to, uh, um, you know, uh, affect uh, Canada uh, and the price of oil, uh, and uh, uh, you know. But to me, that's kind of peripheral uh, at the moment. The way I'm looking at this is, this is more about shift of power in the U.S. and and the shift into um, the uh, Republican majority here. All right, and and what does that mean? I mean, to me, th this comes back to a really um, old. Um, uh, way of looking at things that you know, if if there's a Republican uh, majority, you know, you're looking at uh, older um, uh, markets like oil and uh, also defense. They're going to be built up, right? And money's going to be taken away, or it's going to pour out of uh, social programs and healthcare and alternative energy that is representative of uh, democratic democratic uh, House and Senate majority. OK, so that's uh, the way these things uh, kind of play out. And uh, we're starting to see that right now uh, in uh, this Keystone bill it, in my in my mind. And that's the way I'm, I'm kind of looking at it. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, let's um, uh, what other economies here that we go over? I mean, yeah, with China, I mean, we went over uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know, there's like I said, there's not quite a bit right now in the news. Uh, you know, this ISIS thing, obviously the terrorism, uh, but it hasn't really been affecting the markets. So um, uh, as terrible as it is, uh, it's when it starts to affect the markets that it really matters for us as traders. OK, um, so basically, uh, you know, bring the, all of this stuff back together. OK. And you can see how the, you know, just the current events today, I've kind of tied back into um, other uh, uh, directions from the central bank or economic data that uh, starts to give us, uh, you know, more insight to the way a currency might move, right? And that, that's the way that uh, uh, we use these uh, every day uh, at uh, Traders for Traders, uh, and um, uh, it affects the way that uh, uh, we want to uh, position ourselves. Okay. All right. So, um, and uh, to go over that, I mean, um, if you're interested in more about what we do, then, uh, you know, go to our website and, uh, you know, there's lots of different training programs here available, uh, which lead to possible careers and uh, to become part of our prop desk and uh, funded as well. So you have access to equity and uh, also liquidity. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, any questions that you guys have? Let's see. Um, would Euro go down further if Ukraine is invaded? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, if if Ukraine is invaded, uh, uh, you know, we're going to see um, flight to safety rather quickly, uh, and uh, uh, it's going to be again. It's it just goes along with the same theme that is happening right now, and that is with the uh, dollar strength, okay? Um, and uh, let's see, um, can the BRICS new bank affect other currencies? Um, I don't know what you mean by, by new new bank, um, but uh, uh, the, um, yeah, FX Spooky, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that, uh, but, um, uh, let's see here. A question uh, is funded FX trader uh, is for U.S. citizens only. Uh, no. In fact, um, yeah, you know, the the program we have set up is that um, um, oh, they're starting their own bank. Huh. OK. Um, well, that's uh, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's definitely going to uh, uh, affect uh, affect things. Um, you know, depending on how how much leeway and how much power uh, they, they can uh, you know uh, throw around uh, is going to be the uh, the important issues. Uh, you know, I mean, ISIS wants to start its own currency, right? I mean, 
you know, uh, how, how important is that? Um, and you know, how much, uh, sort of influence is, is that going to have, right? You know, it's this, the same way to start, start to look into these things and start to look, uh, you know, deeper into them. And, and I, I, I do as well on, on that issue. Um, so, uh, uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be taking uh, a look into that, uh, later today. Um, let's see the, um, FX, um, uh, program we have, uh, well, you can see here, this is in the, uh, this picture here is from the, uh, Sydney offices and, uh, basically these, uh, you know, the program is that, uh, you can buy a block of time and, uh, come in and trade with us, uh, for the entire day. And the, what we've come to the conclusion is that it's just a lot easier, uh, for, to learn, uh, while being around professionals. Uh, you know, Brad is, uh, a uh, veteran of the markets for uh, over 20 years, and um, he, uh, you know, just being around him uh, and just little nuances here and there can actually mean quite a bit. And uh, uh, therefore, this it's kind of a, a boot camp in a sense. Uh, but uh, being around that all day long, you know, you can really start to uh, get into the details and uh, and confidence in your trading plan. And that that's the whole idea here. Uh, and uh, uh, then just take it, take it on further from there, then leads into these possible, um, career opportunities and funding, like, you know, like I had mentioned. All right. Um, yeah, they want to trade between themselves and eliminate the U S dollar. Well, there's been talk about that for a long time about, uh, you know, trying to, um, eliminate uh, dollar strength and petrodollars and, you know, all, all sorts of things here, uh, FX bookie, um, I don't see it happening. Uh, I mean, Bitcoin is another one, uh, for example. Uh, it's just, um, you know, the dollar is just so prevalent. Uh, it's so strong right now. And, um, I, you know, I don't really see it being an issue uh, at the moment. But uh, uh, when when, uh, when it does start to have some sort of um, uh, uh, strength, um, then uh, it, it starts to become an issue and it starts to affect the markets, okay? And that's uh, the way we want to take a look at this. Uh, let's see here, another question. Uh, if Ukraine is invaded, is it going to increase volatility in euro? Um, it should be more opportunity for euro. Uh, why you said before that you should stay away from it. Oh, okay. So I said, yeah, absolutely. It, it, it can create the opportunities. Uh, however, it also it creates a lot of volatility, and the volatility is is something if you wanted to avoid that, okay? Because you don't know what's going to happen. You might be really, really nicely positioned uh, in uh, euro dollar or you know uh, euro yen or wh whatever it might be, uh, and then uh, something happens, and uh, all of a sudden you're you're totally taken out very, very quickly. OK, because these things, that's why I, I mentioned earlier on in the webinar, the, they're tricky. Um, it's hard to know um, what's going to happen uh, and uh, and when it's going to happen. And uh, therefore, if you want something that's a little more conservative, uh, then uh, uh, look toward other markets. OK, OK. All right. Um, let's see. Um, let's, what else do we have here? Um Let's see. What's your site? Um, yeah. Okay. It's uh, it's right there in front. Um, and uh, here I can put the link in the chat. Uh, so uh, there you guys go. If that helps you. Um, all right. So yeah. I mean, th this is um, like I said. You know, this is uh, really um, it can get very complex. All right. And we want to avoid that. Uh, we want to make it really simple. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is to start slowly. Uh, if you haven't already uh, woven some of this uh, information into your trading plan, then, you know, just start with headlines, start to get a feel for what's going on out there and what's affecting the market. Uh, and then, uh, then just dive a little bit deeper and, uh, and then take it from there. Um, then, uh, you know, that leads to um, other questions, at least to other articles, it starts to lead to, okay, well, what, you know, they're talking about milk in, in uh, 
uh, New Zealand. Well, what's so important about that? If you if you didn't know, uh, then it, within a, a few minutes, you're going to know a lot. And then you have something to uh, to trade and you have something to uh, – you have an out uh, opinion and uh, outlook on on what's going on uh, in the economy in New Zealand. All right? So uh, – uh, it can be, um, like I said, it can be a little daunting and it could be um, a little confusing. Uh, but just uh, you know, keep it keep it really simple, and then start to mix it in with some of the other aspects and the fundamentals, and then also your your technicals. Okay, because um, then you're going with the trend, and that's that's the whole idea. Okay. Um, all right. Um, Let's see what other uh, questions here. Uh, what percentages? Well, you know, technically, uh, FX Bookie is. If, if you're talking about, I, I haven't alluded to any of the technicals yet in any of the webinars, and I've I've done that on purpose uh, to just try to um, uh, help uh, retail traders get an understanding of what's going on there fundamentally, because. Most retail traders avoid the fundamentals, uh, and uh, uh, it, I think it's uh, just um, uh, a real, real problem uh, in a sense because uh, uh, it's such a mass – it's really what moves the markets. Uh, so you know, start to have a fundamental outlook and a slant and then mix that into your technicals, okay? And then uh, uh, you know, if, you're, if you're trading what, whatever it might be, it could be MACD crossover. Uh, you know, it could be uh, uh, trend lines, uh, it could be horizontal lines of support and resistance. Um, you know, whatever it might be, Fibonacci's. Uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Uh, what what's important is to uh, put the um, uh, some of this uh, fundamental uh, information into your trading plan, all right? And and try to um, come up with something that goes along with. Uh, what the uh, other traders, uh, more important traders like institutions and banks are looking at because this is what they're looking at and this is how they're gauging um, price and value uh, and uh, looking to position themselves based on the fundamentals. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris has a question. How much is um, – what, what are the uh, ranging costs, the reigning costs or training costs? Okay. Okay. Um, Let's see, uh, uh, Chris. I think um, uh, I, I won't get into that. Um, I think just um, maybe uh, contact us. Uh, you know, you can hit the contact contact here, or uh, you know, you can uh, uh, contact me at uh, BP at Traders for Traders if you like. I'll put that in here. Uh, okay. And, uh, and 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 just take it from there, right? So uh, yeah, take a look around the website, and uh, you know we we offer all sorts of things. There's alerts, um, you know, there's training programs of various uh, different levels, uh, and then also this uh, pretty pretty unique uh, plan here we have with uh, you know bringing you into uh, uh, the offices and also becoming part of the team and uh, funded trader, right, on the prop desk. All right, guys. So if that's uh, no more. If there's no more questions, then uh, thank you very much, and let's uh, let's wrap it up. Okay, guys. Thanks. Bye bye.